Well, we are in this series, Faith and Prayer, and I'm not rushing because I don't know of anything more important we could talk about than faith and prayer and getting our prayers answered. For a few weeks now on Wednesday nights, we've been dealing with this topic of growing your own faith, and it, to me, it's just monstrous. It's just monstrous because, thank God, thank God, thank God, when we can go to someone and they can lay hands on us and, and we're healed, thank God for that. Uh, thank God for the anointing with oil. Thank God for all of it. But I said last Wednesday night, if you have a four-year-old and they don't know their multiplication table up to 12 times 12, you don't think a thing of it. But if you have a 14-year-old and they don't know their multiplication table, well, now you got a problem. And the same thing is true with us. The Lord expects us to grow. And uh, so there are people, ministers, and they literally make a living by encouraging babydom in the body of Christ and laying hands on everybody every service I just heard a message in one of Sue's vehicles where Kenneth Hagin, I'm talking about the one that went to be with the Lord in 2003, said that we do people a disservice when we lay hands on people all the time, anoint with oil all the time, because they get to where they think that's the way to be healed. And actually, we've dealt with this the last few Wednesday nights. For example, when Oral Roberts was in Dallas the first time, November, I think it was November 1949. Uh, six weeks later, they did a survey. And out of the people who had gone through the prayer line, the bulk of those, I mean like 80% of those who were healed six weeks later were not full gospel people. One of the messages that really marked us early, June of 1980. Eight, Fred Price at the Maybe Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the other side of Signs and Wonders, he dealt with this. You cannot walk by signs and wonders. You have to walk by the Word of God. And signs and wonders are primarily for the unbeliever. If you don't believe it, read the book of Acts. Signs and wonders are, we're not to walk by signs and wonders. Thank God for signs and wonders. I just said last Wednesday night, you know, God has done miracles in my life. Thank God for them. But he expects us to walk by faith day by day according to his word. So we've been dealing with how to have your own faith. And I'm going to do a little review. I'm going to move quickly through the review. We've been saying everybody should build their own faith life. Don't live your life counting on the faith of other people. Mark eleven twenty two 22 to 24, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things shall every desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. So in this, uh, these verses on have faith in God, he never talks about going to somebody else. He never talks about getting hands laid on you. He never talks about having someone anoint you with oil. He's talking about a process whereby you can have your own faith. The power of God is in the Word of God, and it's only as we take action on the Word of God that we build our faith. You know, I have some weight machines at the house I don't use as often as I should, but they call it resistance training. And none of us get strong without opposition. I still can complain about circumstances, but the Lord got after me about this about 25 years ago or so uh, to overcome negative circumstances. Don't complain about them. Power through and overcome them. Because it's as we overcome in life that we get stronger. Now, the power of God is in the Word of God. And 
I guess anybody that knows us and pays attention knows that we are disappointed in the full gospel world right now because it's a bunch of hocus pocus. I mean, it's, it's like here at Faith Christian Center, we're doing the word of God, but out there it's Halloween every day. And they're, they're prophesying a bunch of nonsense. You know, I remember a famous minister here in the Metroplex, his daughter prophesied in 2012 that John McCain was going to beat Barack Obama. You would think that when you make a blunder that big, you'd dial it back. <laughs> you'd think when you made it, in other words, and, and you can go through my messages, bother me in the least, and you will not find a prophecy that has not come to pass. You know, there's a group now, and they, they, uh, one guy locally actually put on social media that a church cannot be built on the word of God. A church has to be built on apostolic and prophetic anointing. I have lived 66 years, and I have personally met two apostles. They don't grow on trees. They're rare. I've lived 66 years, and I met one prophet. Oh, there sits one right there, but I'm talking about an older man. They're rare. And I've lived 66 years, and I've only met one who held the office of apostle and prophet simultaneously. That was Lester Summerall, one in 66 years. And they would be horrified to hear somebody say, you cannot build a church on the word of God. You have to build a church on apostolic and prophetic anointing. Look, the word of God doesn't die, but apostles die. The word of God doesn't die, but prophets die. So you better make sure you build a church on the word of God because uh, Elijah, okay, Elijah didn't die, but Elisha died. And let me tell you the importance about walking by faith and not by sight. A lot of people make a big deal out of Elisha having a double anointing that Elijah had and doing twice as many miracles. But Elisha is one of the very few people in the word of God that the word of God specifically says he died of a disease. So I don't care who you are. And I don't care how much anointing you got. And I don't care how many miracles God's done through you. You got to walk by faith. Amen. 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 See, because, I mean, he was a great man. Spectacular miracles. But the Bible goes out of its way to record that he died of a, of a disease. You know, if the Lord tarries, we're all going to die. But we don't have to die of something. You know, you can just die from being old. How do I know that? Well, that's what they put on my mom's death certificate, old age. Amen. And uh, if anybody could have lived a lifestyle to encourage sickness, it, you know, it would have been her. But she died of old age, I'm just saying. But she was a tither. Amen. She had a lot of faults, but she was a tither. Amen. So without apology, we say that the power of God is in the word of God. Amen. Why don't we say that out loud? The power of God, power of God. Is, in the is in the word of God. Amen. And so the higher esteem you hold the word of God in, the more answers to prayer you'll receive and the more miracles you re will receive if and when you need them. When we have faith in his word, that faith is manifested by our words and by our deeds. And this is why confession and taking action are critical to receiving from the hand of God whatever it is that we need. For it is by our words and by our deeds that God knows we believe him. Go to Hebrews 11, the Faith Hall of Fame. And it doesn't really talk about their faith. It says Noah did this, and it says Moses did that, and it says Abraham did this. So how did God know they had faith? By what they did. God 
is a faith God. And if you would ever want to walk with this God and receive from him, receive from him, you'll have to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. You'll have to learn how to walk by the word of God and not by what your sensory perception tells you. So if you will not only read the word of God and believe the word of God, but confess that word of God out of your mouth and take action and act like that same word of God is true in your life, then your faith will grow. Say it out loud. My faith will grow. My faith will grow. And your own faith will bring to you the answers to prayer and the miracles you need. Now we've given you the last couple of Wednesdays, James 1, but be ye doers of the word of God and not hearers only deceiving or deluding your own selves. And this is why people who ignore the exhortations and commands of God do so at their own peril because oftentimes God doesn't give you the why. This is where we left off last Wednesday night. He says, thou shalt not commit adultery, but he doesn't tell you why. Thou shalt not steal, but he doesn't tell you why. He's just got this crazy idea that he's God and we're not. But the point is, he says, thou shalt not commit adultery. And you could say, well, the heck with that. I'm going to do it. Well, then you incur all the negative consequences. Thou shalt not steal. Eh, I'm going to steal. And you get caught. Well, then you incur all the negative consequences. But he told you up front, don't do that. And so when we neglect being doers of the word of God, we don't do so at the next guy's peril. We do, we do so at our own peril. He doesn't explain that if you're not a doer of the word of God, you'll never be able to grow your faith and you'll be a spiritual weakling all the days of your life. See, my heart's desire for you is that you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. But a lot of these ministries, you understand it's like the Democrat plantation. If all those people crossing the southern border voted Republican, they would stop it tomorrow. And, and all the welfare and all this stuff, what, what does all this stuff do? It just creates more people on that plantation. It's a plantation. You know, the $10,000 forgiveness of... How many of you paid for your own college education, even if it took a while? I got my hand up. I got my... So why should I pay for the next guy? And, and if the next guy chose a major where he can't pay off his education, well, how's that my problem? You know, I got a, I got a Bachelor of Arts degree in Bible, and I managed to pay for mine. So what kind of numbskull degree do you have to have to not be able to pay, for your, pay your college bills off? And then why is that my problem? Okay, but in the same way, they create more dysfunctional people for their plantation. A lot of churches and a lot of ministries encourage dysfunctional Christianity so people keep coming back. My strategy is I want you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I, I don't want you coming back because you're dysfunctional and I'm going to lay hands on you and anoint you with oil. I want you coming back because you're smart. Amen. And you want to be fed. Amen. Do you understand? There's a world of difference between sitting down and having a bowl of Cap'n Crunch versus going to Del Frisco's and having a steak. Right? And so a lot of this, I don't even know if they understand what they're doing, but they're encouraging dysfunctional Christianity. And that's not our goal at Faith Christian Center. Our goal at Faith Christian Center is that you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And when the devil sticks his big hairy toe across the line of the threshold of your house, you are armed. You are dangerous. You are equipped. You have the full armor of God on and you know how to run him off without, you know, a GoFundMe. Now, it, same thing in Isaiah 119. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Look, 
I've been doing this a while. I mean, I know I don't look like it, but I've been doing this 49 years and three months or whatever. And I'm telling you, the bulk, I mean, I've met them by the thousands. They don't want to hear the word of God. That's why there's a whole Christian television network devoted to prophecy. And it's not just a bunch of nonsense. And if we actually handled them according to the Old Testament, and every time they, pro they prophesied something didn't come to pass, if we took them out and stoned them, well, the network would have to go away. Because <laughs> it's, just, it's just, you know, one, uh, one thing after another that doesn't come to pass. But David said of the word of God, thy word, O Lord, is true. See, I can count on the word of God. I know that we're, we're not going to get a, a new revision overnight. And that's the problem that this wicked, sinful, lazy generation has with the Bible because it just is a rock. And you think you're going to break it, but it breaks you. We're not going to pick this up tomorrow and find out that men can lactate. Do you understand? It is like God. Say it out loud. The Word of God, word of is, God like God. is like God. It changes not. It changes not. And thank God for it because I can count on it. Amen. I mean, if it changed as much as the sociology and psychology departments in these universities, well, we would never know where we stood. Amen. We would never know what to believe. We'd have to, get, we'd have to get a new download every 24 hours to know what to believe. So he says, if ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. In the Living Bible, it says, if you will only let me help you, if you will only obey, then I will make you rich. And of course, you have objections. Well, I don't believe that. You know, that was for the Old Testament. I don't believe that. I don't want to hear that. Well, then it doesn't apply to you. But it applies to me because I believe it. I receive it. I confess it. I take action upon it. Amen. Amen. Well, let's flip the coin over, as I learned from Dr. Frederick K.C. Price. If you do not let Father God help you, if you do not obey, then he won't help you become rich. You can get rich some other way, but he, it won't be with God's help. For you see, if you are not a doer of the Word of God, then you can't grow your faith, and you cannot enjoy the blessings promised in the Word of God. You have to grow your faith. Now, that's Isaiah 119. Let's read on. If you, if you are willing and obedient, you'll eat from the best of the land. But if you resist and rebel, but if you resist and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. In other words, there's a positive consequence to hearing the word of God, believing the word of God, confessing the word of God, taking action on the word of God. But likewise, there is a negative consequence to hearing the word of God and rejecting it or hearing the word of God or, and being too afraid to confess it, hearing the word of God and not thinking it applies to me and that I don't have to be a doer of the word of God, there's a negative consequence. Man, I could go down a path, but it'd really be offensive. And so, of course I'm stronger today than I was five years ago. Of course I'm stronger today than I was 10 years ago because I, I've been taking action on the Word of God. Every, it's resistance training every time. See, okay, we got a challenge offering coming up. Is that two Sundays? So here's what happens. We say pray about it. And so, number one, a lot of folks don't pray. Oh, no. Because, you know, the Lord might tell me to do something. I sure don't want to do nothing, so I ain't going to pray about it. You know, that's the last thing I'm going to do. Okay, then you got another group, and they pray about it. And then there's two numbers. There's always two numbers. There's two numbers. There's always two numbers because your mind has a number. But then God will speak to you. If you ask the Lord, what should I give, he'll speak to you. And we said last Wednesday, John Osteen used to teach that God will speak to us about money more often than anything else. And his idea was it was for two reasons number one we handle money every day we need money every day but also because Jesus said where your treasure is there will your heart be also 
So it's important. Our perspective on money and how we handle money. So, so let's say somebody ventures and they say, okay, I'll pray about it. They pray about it. Well, we're going to have two numbers. We're going to have two numbers. We're going to have two numbers. The, and, and you always know which is the mind because the mind is always the lower number. Always. And so what, has happened, what happened in our lives, you know, we, we had to develop this ability to hear God and take action on what God has said. And listen, that is why we are where we are. Because we developed that ability to hear God and do what he said. So January of 2018... When he said, I want you to quit fooling around and get that church paid off. I didn't think I was fooling around. I thought I was doing a good job. And then he said, and furthermore, I want you guys to give a million dollars of the 5.2 million. But see, I'd come, I'd come along enough. I'd, I'd grown enough. I had matured enough. I was strong enough. I never batted an eye, never flinched, never thought about it, never hemmed and hawed. All right. And he said, I'll show you how to do it. He told me how to do it. Cost us nothing. Well, it cost us the $10,000 that we gave as a seed. But after that, it cost us nothing. And I got done doing that, and I thought, well, that was so easy. Well, why not just do two? So we're in the middle of doing the second. See, once you figure out, once you figure out the word of God and how much power it has, and all you got to do is work it, well, you can work it again and again and again and again and again. And one thing I've learned about him is he will always 100% of the time stand with his word and he will always 100% of the time meet you where you believe. So if you can believe at the bubblegum level, well, I guess he'll meet you at the bubblegum level. But if you can believe him at the million dollar level, well, he'll meet you there. Now, I have to be honest and say you have to work your way up to that. You can't go from zero to a million Seed sowing, there are steps to it because you have, it's resistance training. You have to grow your faith. Well, I don't see how I could ever get there. Well, see, that's your mouth. You, you need duct tape. I don't see how I could ever do that. Well, you got a mouth problem because it's not you doing it, it's God doing it. Say it out loud. I can do all things, do all through, things. Christ, through Christ who gives me the strength. Me the strength. Amen. Amen. And something may seem hard to us, but it's not hard. You do realize, right, God, God's not freaked out by inflation. You do realize, right, God's not freaked out by numbers. You do realize, right, he has no respect for zeros. Doesn't matter. Now, we, we, we have to work our way up. <laughs> but you understand, God's not working his way up. So whatever crazy thing we can believe him for, he'll meet us there. Now, the problem is a lot of times, and when I say you have to work your way up to it, because a lot of times we think we're believing God for some big thing, but we're not because we don't have enough faith for that. So we're just, we're just flapping our lips in the breeze. We're not really believing God for that. I mean, I could stand here tonight and say, you know, I'm, I'm believing God for a billion dollars to walk in the door at Faith Christian Center, but I would know, you would know, Satan would know, God would know. I'm just flapping my lips. That's why we have to work our way up, step by step, line upon line, precept upon precept. But all things are possible to him who believes God. Amen. All things are possible to him who believes God. All things are possible. To him who believes God. So we, we, we take action. We head out. We start. And when we do this, when we're willing and obedient, we avoid this. Verse 20, if you resist and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. Too many of God's people are being devoured by the enemy. And that's what Isaiah 120 tells us will happen if we don't take action on Isaiah 119. Say it out loud. If I don't take action... On Isaiah 119, on Isaiah 119. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm going to get, gonna get Isaiah, 120. Isaiah 120. That's the way it works. And if you have not figured it out, this world out here, 
They're coming for you. They're coming for your money. They're coming for your children. They're coming. And so you, you, you just have to... You just have to make up your mind to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And see, the beautiful thing, when, when Lester Summerall told me, <laughs> we had that kind of relationship. He, he didn't recommend it. He told me to do two special offerings a year. See, I didn't, I didn't see everything at that point in time, but this is a beautiful way to grow your faith because you go to God. You say, God knows your circumstance. God knows how much money you have. God knows how much money you're making. God knows what your dreams are, your goals, your aspirations. God knows what your faith level is. So you, you go to God. You ask him what to do. He gives you a number. If you're married, you, you come together with your husband, your wife. You compare what you think you heard from the Lord, and then you take action. And then, because that's resistance training. And every time, every time we take action on what God has told us to do, first of all, in, in the written word of God, and secondly, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, we get stronger. We get stronger. We get stronger. And that's the goal. That, that's the goal of Faith Christian Center, that you be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's the goal. Not that you be a weakling. Not that you be a soccer ball for the devil to kick around. Now, Kenneth Hagin, the one that went to be with the Lord in 2003, used to teach that all the promises and blessings of the Bible are conditional. They're all conditional. All the promises, all the blessings of the Bible are conditional. God will do his part, but we must do our part. We cannot do God's part, and God will not do our part. Say it out loud. All the promises, all the promises and, the and the blessings in the Bible, in the Bible are conditional. Are conditional. If, if that were not the case, why would Jesus over and over and over and over, and you can throw in some more and overs, say, your faith has healed you. According to your faith, will it be done unto you? If it was all unconditional, why would he talk like that? And so we got this whole Bernie Sanders thing in the church now that it doesn't matter what you do and whether you work or not, you still should get a check. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter what you do, but whether you pray or not, whether you live right or not, whether you read the Bible or not, you're still going to get the same blessings as everybody else. This is absolute, total, utter nonsense. It's just not realistic. I'm really ashamed of preachers in 2022. And, and why, why are we so appalled at what's going on politically? Why would the politicians act better than the preachers? Why would politicians act better than preachers? And so we, we see what's going on in the political realm, and we're horrified, but... That's all going on in the religious realm. I mean, people looking right in a camera and telling lies. Just making stuff up. The judgment seat of Christ is going to be a very unpleasant experience for a lot of folks. And it's going to be really rough for the people expecting the judgment seat of Christ who, oops, go to the great white throne. Because he's going to say, they're going to say, well, Lordy, Lordy, didn't we prophesy in, in your name and in your name cast out devils? See, they might have prophesied in his name. They might, they might have even successfully cast out devils. But he will tell them plainly, 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 I never knew you. Away from me, you evil what? doers so if doing doesn't matter why would he say away from me you evildoers 
do what we do does matter. Listen, if God's people would go by the qualifications Paul laid out for an elder, 90 to 95% of the churches in America would have to close their doors. It's, it's, hor it's horrific. And you check out these people doing all these prophecies, you know, about a certain former president being reinstated and all this nonsense that's never happened in the history of the world. It ain't going to happen. You check out those ministers. You check it out. Their families, I mean, their, their, their families are a bunch of divorced derelicts. Uh, bad fruit, bad fruit, bad fruit, bad fruit, bad fruit. They actually have the same fruit as the guy that they're worshiping. A man of God should be set apart. A man of God should live set apart. A man of God should meet the qualifications laid out by the Apostle Paul. And if he can't, he ought to go to the mall and get a job selling shoes not be rehabilitated and inflict his nonsense on another congregation somewhere else. Well, pastor, you really sound old school. You better believe it. But listen, I, can, I could try till the cows came home to get old school, but I cannot get as old school as the one called the ancient of days. He is old school. This is serious. To stand and teach God's people is serious. You just can't bloviate and, and like a rhinoceros, you know, uh, fart out of your mouth. I'm not trying to be vulgar, but that's what they do. They, that's what you watch them in Lake Naivasha and they make that horrible noise. They, 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 everything comes up that way. And that's the way these politicians are. Look right in the camera. Well, inflation is only up an inch. Well, dummy, inflation is not measured by inches. <laughs> and everybody's grocery bill's up 30%. Everybody's gasoline bill has tripled. And, you know, it's not an inch. But they're doing the exact same thing in the pulpits. Just making stuff up. And our goal here is for you to put on the full armor of God and for you to live a life that's worthy of the calling and for you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So that when a pain hits your body or a child is sick, you know exactly what to do. You don't need to call for help. You know what to do. Because God's no respecter of persons. If he'll answer my prayers, he'll answer your prayers. And we gave you Deuteronomy 30, 14, but the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it, that you may do it, that you may do it, that you may do it. And this is why people don't like Deuteronomy, that you may do it. Listen, this is one of the greatest men that ever stood on planet earth and he gets to the end of his life and in one speech, he tells the people of God everything he knew and understood after walking with God. It's called the book of Deuteronomy. Some of it doesn't apply to us, anything having to do with dietary laws and things like that. But one of the greatest men to ever walk the earth and he walked with God. Listen, if a guy can part the Red Sea, if a guy can strike a rock and bring water out of it, if a guy can call in quail from the sea, if a guy can do this stuff and he's got something to say, well, I want to hear what he's got to say. Because he had power with God. And he said in Deuteronomy 30 verse 14, but the word is very near you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it, that you may do the word, that you may do it, that you may do the word, that you may do it, that you may do the word. In the NIV it says, no, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey it. 
Well, I don't believe I have to do that. Well, see, the exact same people that don't believe they have to obey the Word of God, they're the exact same people who obeyed Burks, they obeyed Fauci, they obeyed Newsom, they obeyed whatever. You know, I didn't do any of it. I, did, I didn't conform to any of it. I didn't obey any of it. I didn't do any of it. And I still haven't had it. Not going to get it. Doesn't have anything to do with me. It's like syphilis. Doesn't have anything to do with me. Monkeypox. <laughs> It'll never happen. Do you understand? Doesn't have anything to do with me. Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Why? 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 But thou shalt meditate on it therein, day and night. Why? 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 That thou that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. See, in other words, by not letting the word of God depart from my mouth, by meditating on the word of God, what is the objective? The objective is so that I'll do it. So that I'll do it. You have no idea how strongly I feel about this because we started with nothing. No denominational help. No fat cats. And we did all of this believing God and just taking action on the word of God. That that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Not what you like. Not what you agree with. All of it. And the Bible is not organized, and so that's a problem. So you have to actually get in there and root around and find out what you need. But see, this is the power to our lives. When, when I got married because of the people who raised me, I knew, I knew, I knew nothing about being a husband. I knew that. And so I went to the Bible. And we went out of our way to go to uh, James Dobson seminars and Tim and Beverly LaHaye seminars. That, those names may be blind to you, but they were really big in the Southern Baptist world in the 70s. They did a lot of teaching on marriage and family. And, and, and I, I, I read the New Testament over and over and over and over trying to find out how to be a husband. I didn't know how to be a husband. It says, husbands, love your wives. Okay. Wives, respect your husbands. Okay. But see, that's not what happens in a lot of Christian homes. The, the husband's not loving toward the wife. The wife doesn't respect her husband. You got all kinds of trouble. Just do the word. Yeah, but I'll respect him when he loves me. Well, that's a chicken or egg deal. What you have to do is respect him by faith and believe the love will come. Or love her by faith and believe the respect will come. It's all faith. And then when Austin was born, March 7, 1982, I mean, I stood there and I thought, oops. Actually, what I thought was, I'm responsible. And I, I, I had to start all over. Because of the way I was raised, those people that raised me, I knew, I knew, I knew I didn't know anything about being a father. So I had to start all over, see, and get different James Dobson books, not the ones on marriage, the ones on parenting. And then how about this? When Austin got to be 11 or 12, I thought, uh-oh, this is different. And forget about that. When Christina got to 11 or 12, listen, listen, you, if you have a, if you have daughters in the home man, you better learn how to walk by faith and not by sight because you need to know what to do. And so he had a book. I don't remember the title of it. And it had a yield sign on the front. It said warning changes ahead or something like that. And it, it had to do with teenagers and so I, I see it. In other words, how many times in my life did I have to go back to the drawing board, go back to the Bible and actually seek out people who knew what they were talking about? Not some bozo whose solution to everything is drink anointing oil. <laughs> because the word doesn't change. And listen, <laughs> 
you know? It's like you have trouble with your car. You know, my solution, I can't figure something out. If it's a Ford, I text Derek. If it's uh, an Escalade, I text Jessica. But you know, if, if, if I can't get through to Derek, he's busy. If I can't get through to Jessica, she's busy. Well, I have to get the book out. <laughs> and that's what the Bible is. It is the owner's manual for living a human life on planet earth it tells us how to be a husband it tells us how to be a wife it tells us how to be a father it tells us how to be a mother it tells us how to discipline children all of it, it tells us how to conduct a church it tells us how to get rich People don't want to hear it, but it does. Not just in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, not just in the New Testament, in the Old Testament. And I love it. You might be here tonight and you have a problem with being rich. I'm not your guy. <laughs> you know, it's like if this is an Italian restaurant, you, you want Chinese. Well, we ain't serving that. And we're not serving poverty, and we're not serving lack, and we're not serving surgeries, and we're not serving sickness. No, we're serving victory. We're serving prosperity. We're serving health. We're serving healing. We're serving protecting children. We're serving victory. Yeah, but you know, you got to leave a little room for defeat. No, 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 no. Victory, success, in everything, in everything. See, he says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. I'm going to deal with this. It's going to be horrifying. I'm going to deal with this in the Holy Week Revival 2023 if we're still here. I'm going to, I'm going to throw down. Man, I'm going to throw down and I'm going to tell why all these ministers have all these divorces in their families and all this drunkenness and, and, and all these uh, alternative lifestyle children. I'm going to throw down and I'm going to, I'm going to explain it because they haven't been doers of the word. And whatever part of the word you don't take action on and do, that's the part that's going to bite you. So you could read the part about being a good father, I mean, excuse me, a good husband, but you don't read the part about being, how to be a good father, that'll bite you. Or you could, you could read all there is to know about marriage, but that tithing business, you don't believe that, you know, your mama said you don't have to tithe. I actually had an employee once tell me his wife said he didn't have to tithe. I said, well, then you go to your wife as your source. Because I, I said, your source here has ended. <laughs> Be telling me what your wife's, I don't care what your wife says. <laughs> what kind of authority is that? My wife says, I don't have to tithe. Okay, so when you stand there at the great white throne judgment, having missed the judgment seat of Christ, you say that to the ancient of days and see how it goes. And before he sends you to the lake of fire, he will not consult with your wife. This is serious. How we live is serious. Whether we love our wife is serious. Whether we honor our husband is serious. Whether we discipline those children is serious. How we handle our money is serious. Listen, Satan's working. Forget about fentanyl. I read about something today they've come up with that's 100 times more powerful than fentanyl. I mean, it doesn't matter which way you turn. Satan is stealing and killing and destroying. And we got porn on every electronic device. And he's serious. I read just the other day, there's cancer-causing agents in... Uh, tattoo ink. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable how Satan is coming at this generation from every angle nonstop to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And so we, we just can't meander through life, you know, uh, ignorant. 
We have to know who our God is. We have to know what our God has said. And we've got to stand with the word of God and not fall for the wiles of the devil. When he comes along and he says, thou shalt not surely die. It doesn't matter how you live. It doesn't matter what you do. Are we really going to fall for this? See, that's why those stories are in the Old Testament. That's why we have the Old Testament. That's why we have the story of Adam and Steve. I mean Eve. So we know how she lost her place. And the Roman Catholic Church for 2,000 years has blamed her, but the Bible specifically says he was standing right there. I don't know how the Lord would have handled that if that had been Jean and Sue, because I would have said, look, I don't know, Father God, this dumb woman ate that apple, but I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> so I don't know how that would have played out. Because I'm not going. So we're going to quit with this idea and one more verse. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. Here are the most important words you may have ever heard in your entire life. The power of God is in the word of God and it's only as we take action on the word of God that we can build our faith. The power of God is in the word of God and it's only as we take action on the word of God that we can build our faith. Now, of course, somebody might say, you know, pastor, you've mentioned marriage, you've mentioned child rearing, you've mentioned these things, to, you know, money. Uh, what, if I, what if I messed up? See, that's the beautiful thing, man. You got to keep reading. Whatever th you think you know about the Bible, you got to keep reading because we find out that the mercies of God are new every morning. And so if somebody's here and you've been divorced, okay, okay, okay. Just don't do it again. Thank God for his mercy. If, if we ask how many have never failed God, we'd have to give an altar call for liars. We've all failed them. We've all missed it. We've all made mistakes. We have all made big mistakes. The point is to go to the word of God and learn what to do and stop making mistakes. And then, and then, how about this? And then if we've made mistakes, call out to him because the Bible specifically says that he restores the years the locusts have eaten. And so you can take your case to God and you can lay it out to him. I failed. I messed this up. Help me put it back together. Help me redeem this situation. Help me see this situation restored. And thank God his mercies are new every morning. Amen. I'm so grateful. You know, I'm not looking for judgment. I'm looking for mercy. I'm not looking for judgment. I'm looking for grace. And thank God his mercies are new every morning. And he'll help you. See, it's the, guy that, it's the guy that pretends he never made a mistake, that he's the one that has trouble seeing the years the locusts have eaten restored. So the power of God is in the word of God, and it's only as we take action on the word of God that we can build our faith. Here it is, 1 John 5, 14, 15. This is the confidence. Everybody say confidence. Confidence. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, and how do we know his will? Talk to me, how do we know his will? If we ask anything according to his word, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Let me tell you what, in everything they're doing, Everything they're doing is designed to create fear and trepidation and anxiety. Professor Desmond of Belgium does a great job on this, this mass formation psychosis. Lockdowns, isolation, all of it. It's all designed to create fear. When you go to the Word of God, you don't pick up fear, you pick up faith. When you watch MSNBC, when you, well, first off, you might become a mental reject, but you're, in other words, if, you, if your IQ doesn't plummet, you're going to at least be full of fear. MSNBC, C, C, and now NBC, ABC, CBS, they're all in on it. Amen. 
and we fill our minds with this stuff, listen, we'll be defeated. But if we fill our minds with the word of God, if we fill our spirit man with the word of God, if we bring ourselves to take action on the word of God, if we'll act like the word of God is so, that's what we did here at Faith Christian Center in the midst of the pandemonium. We just acted like the word of God was so. And you know what we got? We got word of God results. And so-called word of faith people closed their churches for two years. Look, no, no word of faith guy closed his church for two years. They were pretenders. They were imposters. They weren't word of faith. They were something else. We just acted like the word of God was so. We didn't lose a person. Didn't lose a person. Didn't lose a person. Not to this. Occasionally at Faith Christian Center, somebody passes from this or that, but not from COVID. We just didn't participate. We just said it doesn't have anything to do with us. We acted like, see, it's not just a matter of faith. It's acting, and acting is faith. God knows what you believe by what you do. We just acted like the word of God was so, and the word of God was so. Isn't that amazing? Golly gee whiz. And we'll be laughing about this 100 years from now. We'll, we'll, we'll bump into each other on the streets of glory. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly much about heaven and how it works. I don't know how it all works. I'm, I'm hoping there's cafes up there, and I don't know if I'm going to need coffee, but I like coffee. And so, you know, we'll bump into each other on the streets of gold, and we'll bump into each other in the cafe in Zion or whatever, and, and we'll, we'll be laughing, and we'll be laughing about how in the year of the corona. We paid off Faith Christian Center. What a miracle, what a miracle, what a miracle, what a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if God can do that in the year of the corona, why would you be afraid of inflation? If, the, if God can do that in the year of the corona, why would you be afraid of a recession? What, what, look, sit, tell your neighbor, this recession doesn't have anything more to do with you than COVID. So forget it. 